Hi, I'm Chris Bradshaw from Hexagon. During this video, we will take our PV Elite pressure vessel model that we started previously and start to add more details, including platforms and an inlet and an outlet nozzle. We will also see how the nozzle analysis is performed during the input and see how to review the results during the input session. Okay, so let's now make a small change and then add some details such as nozzles and a platform to get the pressure vessel ready for analysis. First of all, I'm going to go into select mode and select the cone and I'm going to change the diameter of the small end of the cone. This top chamber it doesn't need to be so large, it can be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to adjust the diameter of this small end or the two end, the far end of the cone. So I'll change that down to 1.25 meters. And as I change that, of course, the model updates, but only the cone updates. The following components don't change automatically. Now that's deliberate. There may be some situations where you don't wish the following components to adjust automatically in diameter. Maybe you want them to be a different size. There, there are certain situations in PV Elite where that may be the case. However, this is also quite a common situation. So PV Elite, we don't try to be too clever and do things on your behalf. But as a compromise, we put this function behind a single button click. So this button here, propagate element diameter. If we hit that button, the model updates and the remaining sections are now the correct diameter. Also, if I just select each of the sections in turn and check down the bottom, our required thickness is 9.77, uh, 9.1, 9.1 and so on. So uh, currently we're at 13 millimeters, which was inherited from the large cylinder in the previous video. But we can actually make this a little smaller. We can get away with this thinner, so less material, less weight, saving us money. So all it takes is a quick check down in the bottom corner. And then I can change this to, let's say, 10 millimeters on the conical section, which is now 10. But the following components are still 13 millimeters. So just like we had with the propagating the element diameter, we can also share other properties as well. So selecting the cone, I'm going to this button here to share information. I can, using the node numbers indicated on the graphics here, 40, 50, 60, 70, I can share any properties that I like, such as the finished thickness, for example. As you can see, you can share other properties as well just by checking the box. Thickness is the only one I'm interested in. So I'm going to check the box and hit OK. And now, selecting the cylindrical sections, I can see everything is now 10 millimeters, but I also see that there's no red text down at the bottom. So everything is OK, but we've saved a little bit of material. So now let's add some details. I'll start by adding a couple of nozzles, uh, one inlet, one outlet nozzle. So let's add the inlet nozzle on the top head. To do this, select what shell you wish to attach the detail onto, which will be the top head, and then select the detail you wish to attach, in this case, the nozzle. This brings up the appropriate dialog box for the selected component. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the name of the nozzle. Let's call this end top. And I'm okay with the default material, A106 grade B, um, the flange material down here towards the bottom right, SA105, again I'm happy with that. But what I am going to change is the nozzle diameter. I'm going to change this to a, let's say a larger nozzle, 350 nominal size. As soon as I make a change to any of the parameters in here, PV Leap performs the area replacement calculations and the results are shown down at the bottom and they're shown here in blue, everything is okay, we've passed. The only other thing I want to do is position the nozzle, but in this instance I want the nozzle in the top center of the head, so I don't need to change any of the dimensional data. I'm also happy with a class 150 flange. The flange rating is checked against the uh, specified pressure, so that's okay. So I just hit okay. And there is my nozzle 
on the top of the head. Let's add the next nozzle, the outlet nozzle, which I'm going to select here onto the main shell. Select the shell, attach a nozzle, and I'm going to again change the description to N1. Um, but this time I want this one to be exactly the same as the top nozzle. So if you do have a number of identical or similar nozzles, you can very easily use this button here, just like. You then get a list of all the nozzles in the current model. There's only one here, so I'm going to pick the end top. That gets brought through, you'll see the schedule, uh, sorry, the diameter has been brought through. And as soon as I click on and then click off that field to kick in the calculation, I can see the results down the bottom and these are shown in red which shows that there is an issue. So here is my area available, 656 uh, square millimeters. I need area required, 1514. So clearly I've failed. Um, you can see the individual areas, area one, two, three, four, five, down here as well. Uh, so I can see also the effect of making any changes. So perhaps if I thicken this nozzle up, maybe schedule 80, I can see that's made a change down here but it still failed. What you can also do in PV Elite is this button here, the calculator button, can show the detailed results. So not just the final answer, you can see the detailed results shown here, various different calculations that are done. Here's the results highlighted in red again where there is an issue. We need an additional 425 square millimeters but PV Elite doesn't just tell me there's a problem it also makes suggestions where possible. So the area without a pad is insufficient. PVL recommends to add a reinforcing pad. So we also get a resolution suggested to us as well. So I'm going to hit OK and add the reinforcing pad, which is done by changing the type of nozzle. This will be an insert nozzle with a reinforcing pad. Changing the nozzle displays the pad section up in the top right of the dialog box. And the default values for the pad 50 mil wide, 14 millimeters thick is sufficient. As you can see, the calculation is now shown in blue, no longer red. Mm -hmm. The final thing I want to do is move the nozzle. It's currently on the weld. So let's move it, let's say 750 millimeters along the shell. Okay. And there is my nozzle. Now I can see my nozzle there with the repad, but what I can also see is the longitudinal weld seam. And my nozzle quite clearly intersects that no longitudinal weld seam. If we were to run the analysis, PVLEAT would give me a warning about that, but I don't need to run the analysis to see. I can see straight away just looking in the graphics. So very useful having the longitudinal seams displayed. And I can change these by going to the, sh the cylindrical shell going over here to the longitudinal seam efficiency field and hitting the button at the end of the field. I'm going to the longitudinal weld seam data page. And on the cylinder, I can change the angle of seam number one, and let's just say change that to 90 degrees. Apply the changes and hit OK. And now the seams have adjusted and no longer is the nozzle intersecting a seam. Now let's finish off by adding one more detail. Let's say onto this very top section here, I'm going to add a platform. Select what I want to attach the detail to, and then select the detail I want to attach my platform. I'll just give the platform a name. Let's call it access one. And then specify the geometry. The platform, a little bit more geometry required, of course, than a nozzle. So we have a sketches here to assist us with the input. And so the first thing is, where is the platform located? So this is on a 1.5 meter long shell. So let's move it very close to the top, 1450. And we will go from zero around to 130 degrees around the platform by the start and end angles. And then for the weights, for the railing, I'll specify a three Newton per millimeter generic weight. And for the grating weight, I will hit the button and look up from the database 
let's say a one and a quarter by eighth of an inch bars from the grating database. My platform will be one meter in width and it will be 1.2 meters high and the clearance from the vessel, this value here again shown in the sketch, 150 millimeters. And my wind force coefficient I'll put in 1.5. That then computes the effective platform wind area which is shown in this field here. If you have an irregular shape platform or for whatever other reason you've computed the area yourself, you can open that field, make it enabled by checking the box. You can then edit that number. Finally, I'm going to have a ladder on this platform here. The ladder is relative to the platform, so my ladder will be at angle zero and it will start at zero, which is the platform. And it will stop, I'm going to go down three meters. The ladder, I will have again a three newton per millimeter unit weight. It will have a cage and the total platform and ladder weight is shown here. Uh, once again, if you've computed that yourself, you can check this box to open that field out. And when I hit OK, there is my platform. Again, if I switch to the orbit mode and the graphics, I can spin around, I can take a look at the vessel. But now the vessel, this is complete and it's now ready for analysis. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. But remember, if you do have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Hexagon. Thanks for watching. <laughs>